Electrolysis tanks are great for restoring cast iron. Now, you do not need one to restore cast iron, but they do make life a lot easier. And I have two electrolysis tanks. I'm using two 55 gallon drums. Inside, we have an electrolyte solution. We have a hook to hang the cast iron. We have the anode here, a piece of sheet metal, and our power source are manual battery chargers. In this process, the cast iron is the cathode and the sheet metal is our anode, also known as our sacrificial steel. And if I was explaining this to a five-year-old, the anode gets destroyed so the cast iron could get cleaned. The more you use the E-tank, the more cast iron you clean, the more corroded the anode becomes. And after every use, I try and clean the cathode using a scraper. I'll stick this in here with a glove and scrape all of the buildup off of the sheet metal. A clean anode makes the tank work more efficiently. But over time, the anode breaks down so much it needs to be replaced. So I'm going to take both of these pieces of sheet metal out and show you what they look like. All right, check these out. These are gnarly. You can see complete holes in them. The bottoms have corroded right off. Now, what I originally did is I had them bent the other direction. Let this side get corroded a bunch, then I turned them around so I can get more use out of them. But now they're basically shot. They're not working nearly as well as if they were brand new. And the crazy part is, here's what they look like brand new. And again, I'm using a sheet of plain steel. Now, I just picked these up from Home Depot. They are kind of expensive. I think they're about 60 bucks each, so 120 bucks. Now, a lot of people will use scrap metal. They'll go to a scrap yard and pick up something to use. But I make money selling and restoring cast iron, so I have no issue spending some money on some anodes. These are big, they have a lot of surface area, so they work extremely well. And I run these E-tanks nearly 24 seven, and I get probably three months out of these, so to me, it's worth the investment. Again, let's compare to these beat up pieces of metal. So these are just gonna get tossed out now. And what I do is I use heavy duty clamps to help bend these pieces of sheet metal because they are pretty thick. I'm going to put them back in the E-tanks. All right, the new anodes are in. They look great once they're in. I use a clamp to kind of keep them in place and the C clamp is the main way I fasten them to the barrel without having to drill a hole in them. So both of these tanks need more water and they're going to be good to go. Now what happens is I generally like the amps on the charger to be reading between 5 and 10. Anytime I really see it drop really low, maybe 2, 3 amps, I know that the anode needs to be cleaned. Eventually, on a really corroded anode, you're not going to get those amps up high enough. The anode needs to be replaced. And now I got both tanks up and running. I added more water due to natural evaporation. And you can see I got pieces inside. That's why the water is moving. And both chargers are running at 7 amps on a 2 amp setting, which is great. And both tanks have been running now for about 16, 18 hours, give or take. You can see all the foam on the top. And what I thought might happen happened. This tank is connected to this charger and the amps are actually higher. And I think that's probably because a lot of the electrolytes started to kind of sink to the bottom. Once it was running and the ion started flowing, I think that increased the amps. And what you can do to lower the amps if need be, 
is move the cathode away from the anode. So if we back this up, you can see that dropped pretty significantly, probably around like six right now. So new anodes are in, tanks are running great. 